Welcome. To Arcade Audio. And germs, welcome, welcome, welcome to Dilettante Ball. I'm Johnny. I'm Spencer. Here on Dilettante Ball, we go on Wikipedia. We click random article. And we talk about it. Yeah, we do. Johnny, I have one question for you. Okay. Did Pod Slam already happen? Yes. <laughs> and it was great, and we met our goal. <laughs> We're so thankful to everybody. <laughs> But you know what? I bet donations are still open. So if you want oh, to go sure. to uh, arcadeaudio.net slash podslam, you can throw a couple bucks our way and it goes towards Connor's Cure. So you're not throwing them our way at all. You're no. throwing them Connor's Cure's way by way of our way. That's that's right. With intermediaries. Something I realized today. Uh -huh. I put in a new Invisalign tray this morning. Okay. And that means that every time we record, I will have a new... Invisalign. Interesting. In. Yeah. So every time, every time we record, your teeth are just a little bit better, straighter, like stronger, faster, harder, harder better, lover. better. That's interesting for the for the the listening audience. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they can tell that my teeth are better. Yeah. Also, the first few days with each new tray, uh -huh. I definitely notice that I talk differently Even thicker. until I get used to the. The new shape. How strange, because it's barely different. How long is this course going to take you? Six months? A year. A year. That's a not so bad. A year actually. It's, a, it's twice as bad as six months. It truly is twice as bad as six months. A year, you say? I wonder, what other things would you like to, like, imagine that there was, you could, anything you wanted to do with your body, like, I want, I want my jaw to be more square, right? Okay. You could, they would let you, there would be a tray for it or whatever the fuck it needs, it needs, but it takes you a year. Sure. That'd be cool, right? Yeah. <laughs> I guess I don't got nowhere to go with that, huh? Yeah. But you would be, you know what I'm saying? Where it's like, well, a year's really not that long. It's pretty fucked up how easy your teeth move, huh? Y yeah, it actually, it's a little too easy. Because this is just plastic. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> like, I bet you could mess your teeth up real bad on accident. Like, what if you just, like, kept a, a little pebble, like, inside your cheek? Sure. That'd fuck you right up. I bet it would, right? Mm -hmm. Especially because every once in a while you bite on it on accident, mm. even though you don't want to. Yeah. I I have noticed even in this short time, mm. this is only, uh, I don't know, my fourth uh -huh. tray. So what I'm however eight many in. eight weeks. Yeah. They already look different. That's wild. It's fucking crazy. You know what always uh, freaks me out is when um, you can see too much of someone's teeth. You know what I mean? It tends to be people that are like older. Maybe they've had some gum troubles. Maybe they've had some drugs troubles, mm -hmm. and they got this, the too, too many, much too much teeth too much teeth showing. Yeah, and it makes you wonder how far up do those guys go? Oh, they go they go extremely too far. So they could there could be even more teeth. teeth are so fucking big. I'm not a fan of them. I have a friend. Yeah. We both we both know this person. Okay. I won't I won't say their name okay. on on air, but they uh they were born without canines i believe i see so i have a friend like this i have a friend several friends like this i guess so they basically took their like second whatever so the tooth next to where the canines would be okay and filed them into the shape of canines and and then they had like extensive braces work to move those teeth over so so basically so their smile would look Normal. Okay. So they're still missing they're still the total they're, same amount of teeth, but now they're hidden by your cheeks or your gums, basically. Is that what you're saying to me? No. What I'm saying is, so smile smile, smile for me. <laughs> so you've got two teeth in the front. I do. Then two. Yes. Then your canine. The vampire teeth. Yes. Yes. Now, I believe this this friend had not the vampire teeth. Okay. So they took those second teeth. The one right next to your front teeth. And filed them into vampire teeth. I see. And, and then moved, give, moved everything else around to give the illusion of... Did they move everything forward? I think there was probably some crowding anyway. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Did it work? Did they look normal? Well, so so they were not born with... A, it's not like there were whole, you know, big holes where those teeth were. You know what I mean? No, that's what I was picturing. Oh, no, no, no. Because I've got a friend that, that that's... What oh, happened wow. with him? No, I I believe it was just kind of like more or less normal, but it was just kind it of... It just didn't look right. Right. Weird. Yeah. 
like Joe Biden's teeth. Yeah. Like that. Like Guy Smiley. I don't know who that is. A Muppet. Yes. Yes. Uh, the, so the guy, I'm, the guy I know from back home, he's miss, he was just straight up like, and multiple people in his family have the same thing, where they don't have their canine teeth. The, this person too, they the whole, fa- the whole okay. family. But with his, they were just gaps. They just weren't there. Wowzers. And, and so what he had, maybe maybe oh. since he's maybe had them like veneers or something in, installed. But when we were in high school, he had like essentially a what do you call that? A, like a, a, a retainer, retainer that had fake teeth. All it had was just the two. Re- yeah, the ah, two teeth. So, so he fun. could like freak people out and just like pop it out and just like oh Bleh. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, exactly. That's good. That's yeah, good. It's very fun. Um, no, my teeth are fine. They're fine. They get the job done. Sure. Hmm. Could I be more handsome? Oh, well, always. <laughs> That's the wrong answer. We all could be more handsome. I don't think so. I think there's got to be a who's the most handsome person on earth that didn't. You know what I mean? That just it just happened. That just is. Yeah. You know, it's probably someone we'll, we'll never know. Just like some dude. So yeah. You just know. like a. I wonder if they know it. Just like a UPS guy or something. Yeah. Great calves. I was just gonna fucking say it's he's got so great legs. Hard to get good calves. Mm-hmm. You kind of. It's a lot of work if you don't already just have them. Mm-hmm. Would he know this no. man? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. That's part of what makes and, him handsome, isn't it? And and the thing is, he would have he would just have like a regular wife and kids. Yes, and like all the other moms would be like, "Oh my god, I want to fuck Chet." <laughs> Chet and is Chet's so like, hot. "Oh hey, oh hey, uh, just picking up just picking up Teddy from the sleepover. Thanks for having him oh, over. Awesome. Uh, and they're like, "Chet, will <laughs> can we fuck?" And he's like, "Ah, oh oh, Bev, yo Bev, you're so funny. What a card, yeah." <laughs> anyway, I gotta, I gotta get home. Uh, the wife's got a roast in. So. Oh my god, he's just a, he's just a regular guy. I love Chet. He makes good money. He makes okay money. Yeah, he's man. Fuck, that sounds awesome. Yeah, he's not, he's not rich. I bet he's not even like ripped. No, no, no. no. I bet he's like okay. He, like he looks fine. Like, he's he's got some muscles. He's because well because the packages can be heavy. Yeah, he's not ripped, but he's like he's, he's toned. toned. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> we should get an article before we talk oh about my Chet God. for another 10 minutes. <laughs> We're in love with Chet. What's the what's the job that has the most handsome people? Like a regular job, like a UPS driver type job. I feel like it mm, I was going to say I was going to say airplane pilots, but I don't think that's true. Hmm. They're fine. They do fine. I bet welders? No. No, no, no. It's got to be something where you're doing like enough you know enough what? physical labor to keep you toned, but not so much that it's like damaging your body. I was gonna say, let me let me run this by you. Well, no, here's what I was gonna say: bartenders, maybe. Okay. But I think there's too many different types of bars and too many different types of people so that you can't. There's no. There's no. It's not homogenous. Mm-hmm. Barbers. Barbers is an interesting thing to say. There, that's a wide a wide sampling too. You've got yeah. like the hipster type barbers, but Which then you've like, also got old school like yeah, like Hell's Kitchen ass. Yeah, like, yeah. You know what you know what it is? It's moms. <laughs> they have the hardest job and the hottest bods. Well, the most handsome. Is that what was that was? That the it, was it was handsome. Moms can be handsome. I would like a handsome woman, right? Sure. What's not to like? Equatorial Guinea at the 2016 Summer Olympics. Jesus Christ. Equatorial Guinea competed at the 2016 Summer Olympics in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, which was held from 5 to 21 August 2016. Oh, that's a long time, huh? We were just in a thrift store the other day. The Brown Elephant. Yes. Maybe you've heard of it. I have. They had a bowl of like enamel pins. Okay, cool. No exaggeration. Every pin in this bowl of enamel pins was a 1996 Atlanta Olympics pin. Whoa. They all just had Izzy. Uh-huh. And I, I would have gotten one, but it was all like... None of them were great, but I am a big Izzy fan. Sure. But it was just like, Izzy wears Hanes. And like <laughs> it was just like all of this weird stuff. Are those not valuable? I was under the impression that like Olympics pins were kind of like a, a, a tradable good. Well, maybe go to the brown elephant, scoop them up, and I don't know. See, that's that's the thing. That's or is it like a beanie ba- babies thing. <sighs> well, maybe, but that's that's the thing. And I'm gonna put a pin in beanie babies because I've okay. got a little story. But that's okay. the thing with any collectible. Yeah, is someone working at the brown elephant probably doesn't know because sure. it's just a kind of general thrift store. Yes, 
But the other day we were there, I had an eye doctor appointment pretty early. Jessica was like with me and okay. then she just was like, okay, well, the eye doctor takes like 15 minutes. I'll just like hang out. Sure. So she's going to go to this brown elephant. Uh huh. They, my appointment was at like 10, say. That's so early. Brown huh? elephant opens at 10. Okay. So I was there a little early. There were people lined up outside the door. Wow. So it's like, okay, got to see the fresh haul. Uh, got to wow. find my Olympics pins. I see. Buy it for, you know, 80 cents. Sell it for $20 bucks, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So the fact that they even were still there means they were of no value. I think so. I think that's fair. And and you, the, it's the people. And it, it, That's the thing is like, to me, say, that, say those pins were worth $20 uh-huh. each. To me, it's just like a fucking goofy ass thing and right. I don't care. So I, I would buy it for 80 cents. But for someone who's like willing to put in the work and do the research and all this stuff, they kind of earn that, that markup, you know? Yeah, sure. That's, that's fair to say. I don't know. Did you want to talk about beanie babies real quick? I did. You have, I think, don't you have something that combines pins and beanie babies? Oh, I do. Our friend, that was not the thing I was going to say, but our friend Rich did get (laughs) me for Christmas, a princess Diana beanie baby enamel pin, which is good. Very good. It's really good. Uh, the thing I was going to say, which is kind of the perfect confluence of the 1996 Atlanta Olympics and Beanie Babies, is I believe the Thai company was based in Atlanta. What? Oh, T.Y. T.Y., yeah. I see. Uh, no, T.Y. <laughs> um, and I had a friend who went to the Atlanta Olympics in 1996. That's cool. Which we were in first, second grade, second grade, I think. Okay. And she came back and she was like, all of these stores had these things called Beanie Babies. Whoa. And they're going to be real valuable. Whoa. And it was like it was like before they... they that was like the fucking pilot run of Holy Beanie cow. Babies was like Atlanta in 1996. And then like the next year just exploded. Wow. Imagine someone had to have made a billion dollars, right? If they were lucky. If they... If they there had to be at least one person. Yeah. Oh my Ty God. Pennington. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine just buying like whatever. Because like they probably like they, what do they cost? Five bucks maybe. Right. So but imagine you, being like buying a new one every week for your kid. Mm-hmm. You know, and then the kid didn't really play with them, so they just kind of sat there, which means they're probably in good condition. And all of a sudden, like eight months later, you're like, I'm sorry, this iguana is worth how many hundreds of dollars? Sorry, Timmy. I'm gonna sell this iguana and get you a grateful dead bear. <laughs> <laughs> if beanie babies were still happening, would they have made one for nine eleven? Um, first of all, Beanie Babies are still happening to this day. Second of all, they made three for 9-11. <laughs> one for each digit. Why? Did There's they make one for the one for, one the, for the trade towers. One, one for the Pentagon. And one for Flight 93. Uh, no, what it is is it's for the, for the uh, I believe it's the fire department, the police department, and then the, 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 the civilians. Civilians, sure. And there's bears, right? Yeah. No, it might be like a ger. A, I think it's a German Shepherd for the police, a Dalmatian for the fire department, and then a bear for the people. Okay, a bear for the people. Mm-hmm. That's nice. That sounds like a good campaign slogan. I mean, they kind of had a bear for everything, right? They had a holiday bear every a bear year. for all occasions. A holiday bear, uh-huh. which just encompass all the all the the. Well, it the, was it was a Christmas bear. Okay, um, it was a winter solstice bear. But I can I can remember what the year that I was very into Beanie Babies. I opened that that sucker up on Christmas. Oh Ooh, god. what a day! Oh my god! Ugh. Was it just like white with like snowflakes on it or something? Or like um, close. It was white with like uh, holly, okay. like little little holly, holly berries sprigs. in the the leaves. Yeah, that's cute. Yeah, it was nice. Why um did they stop being the way that they were? The internet. <sighs> Or did, or did has, the internet help the babies of the Beanie Babies? Has there been any? I don't know. Is the answer yeah, to that question? Either. Has there been anything like Beanie Babies that has retained its value? Because it's, since that era, because well, there are things. Yeah. Well, are you because I because so go ahead. Believe it or not, today I was just talking about Beanie Babies with someone, and I rewatched that uh, Bankrupt by Beanies. Bankrupt by Beanies. Yeah, sad. T- today. And this this man genuinely thought he was like investing in he like traded in their his entire like savings and his family like the college like fund. the values just gonna go up and he's got like storage units full of them is it's so sad is, I think it's on YouTube I think. yeah and it's only like eight minutes is there something like that that retained value like that still to this day it's like oh man you 
you know, you got a cool shaven Ken. Holy shit. Cool shaven Ken. Maybe cool shaven Ken, actually. That'd be pretty sweet. It smells like Old Spice. Is, did it come, didn't it come with like a little bottle of Old Spice? Man, what a great, what a great product. Um, most of the things would be things that, like the reason that things are collectible now is because of the things that did retain, you know what I'm saying? Like, like baseball cards or G.I. Joe action figures. Are that, baseball cards even a thing anymore? I'm, that's what I'm saying. So like, they aren't to the degree that the, the good ones are. Like things like, you know, whatever the fuck, like a Honus Wagner, or, you know, whatever the fuck, you know Keep what I'm trying. saying? <laughs> um, they're like old school baseball cards. Ones that sure. so they're, it's because that they're they're scarce is what gives them the right, value. Right. That's why Black Lotus in Magic the Gathering is the most valuable card because there were only like there were only ever twelve hundred printed. Mm-hmm. So when people's moms threw them away, every single mom that threw a Black Lotus away drove Increased. the price of everyone else by a thousand dollars. So it's got to be something. It has to be something people don't even want. So why why isn't you you can't and the thing is you can't catch the wave you either find yourself on it or you missed it why didn't that happen with Beanie Babies then did they keep making too many or 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 is you know or specifically why isn't it like the Princess Diana Beanie Baby is worth you know forty five hundred dollars right. right I remember back in the day it was like. There was a specific inchworm one, yeah. but there were two different kinds. One had like felt antennas and one had like posable antennas. And then there was the, 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 I had a book that told you the values <laughs> of all the beanie babies. Then there was the, the elephant and there were two versions. There was a Royal blue and mm-hmm. then like a light blue version. Uh-huh. And like the Royal blue one was the one that was worth, you know, a thousand dollars. Right. And then they, the, the face shape of the bears used to be different. Interesting. And then when they changed the face shape, the old face shape was more expensive. So what is, why, why are they not, you know, what's the most you think you could get? What's the most valuable Beanie Baby right now? Like if I happen to have one and I sold it for like the going rate, yeah. how much could I get for it? Yeah. I bet you could get 50 bucks for one. Okay. I bet there's some out there you could probably get 50 bucks okay. for. I know, based on no information, I okay. wonder if I'm even lowballing it. Who's to say? Yeah. And because the thing is, the thing, the ones that might be valuable are ones that are maybe like misprints or miscuts. Like Iggy and Rainbow, the lizards who had swapped tags. Yes. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Those, those tend to retain some amount of value. Sure. I'll tell you what still is valuable that baffles me. I thought for sure would lose its value. Uh, Pokemon cards from the original run. No shit. Those are still pretty valuable. Um, granted, well, so like a, like a first edition holographic Charizard, right? That was like the big one back yeah. in the day. That's still like worth some money. I think it's still worth like a hundred bucks or something. I read that Pokemon is the highest grossing franchise of all time, which is shocking. Wow. That's interesting. I could see that. I would assume star Wars. Yeah. You would think that because it's been around so much longer. Is it because, wow. I wonder. Yeah. It has been around a lot longer, probably like 20 years, maybe, maybe 20 years longer, maybe a little less. Yeah. Yeah. Plus Pokemon, I think hit in Japan, like 97, maybe. Yeah. Um, Pokemon, huh? Who owns Pokemon? Nintendo. Nintendo? For, no, for real. Like they own like everything. Uh, I think it's not like Bandai or something like that. I you think know? it's maybe Nintendo and Game Freak. That's got to be awesome for them. Mm-hmm. You would think it'd be like Disney or something, right? But Disney's not a franchise. It's not a franchise. I I'm see. sure that Di- yeah, Disney owns every fucking thing there is. So of course that's yeah. the most profitable media company but like specific specific franchise what a crazy yeah that's just like some guy just came up with that yeah I'm gonna come up with some stupid game when you catch some bugs and shit yeah whoops I'm a quadrillionaire it's nuts think of so there are like stores that are just Pokemon stores we went to one in Japan and it fucking ruled I bet it was the coolest place I've ever been it was so great man did they have like a Nurse Joy there? Like you could like, you know what I'm talking about? Uh, like you know how they have a hospital for American girls? Dude, my sister was in town this weekend. Yeah, we went to the American Girl store. Uh-huh. Uh huh. It's buck wild. I've never been inside. Um, so there's I'm this, not allowed. It's two floors, uh-huh. which is crazy. There's just so many dolls. But then on the second floor, there's like this little area, and it's like, oh, what's, what's this? Oh, it looks like a, kind of a, a. A, an old timey downtown street. Okay. There's a salon okay. for you and your doll. You and your doll. There's an ear piercing zone for you and your doll. Ooh. There's an ice cream shop <laughs> for you and your doll. 
There's an entire restaurant. Like like a restaurant for you and your doll. I didn't know about any of this. Me neither. I knew the American Girl doll store was there, but then there's just like legit a fucking restaurant <laughs> in like the back of the American Girl store. And you're and the piercing place is a real piercing place and yep. the ice cream place is real ice cream and yep. it's not like Play-Doh ice cream. Mm-hmm. What? That's awesome. Those things are the the restaurant shocked me cuz I was like they do not advertise this at all. I like, mean, how do you, how do you know? You know, how do you find out about that? Are there things like that for, for? Well, I was gonna say for boys. But boys can have dolls too, but you know what I'm saying? Like, classic. Like back in the day, you know, McDonald's would be like, "Girls toy or boys toy." Yeah. You know, what I'm, you know, what I'm getting at. Like, mm-hmm. were there things like that for for? I mean, not that I'm like, not that every toy wasn't already for boys. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. So I'm just wondering, like, that's really cool, like really immersive and like, yeah, fun. totally. Uh, the closest thing, which is still a doll, is like Cabbage Patch Kids. You yeah. could go to like the nursery and like pick yours. Yeah, I don't think so. That's interesting. That's I wish we had more imagination type shit like that, where it's like, yeah, me and my doll are gonna get our ears pierced. And like the dolls don't. I assume they're really poking holes in the doll's ears too. Probably, you know, to right? get so that you can both get earrings together. How do the girl the the dolls get their hair cut? That I don't know. Do they like swap Because that's, that's a one-time thing, you yeah, know? Yeah, right? Hmm. Unless, yeah. Maybe they just style it. Are there boy dolls? Um, Are there transgender dolls for American Girl dolls? So, th- there... I would say, because there's a design your own. And there was... I designed my own. Interesting. There was no option for gender. Okay. But they are Probably all... Fine. They are all... I would say fairly neutral. So there's a game coming out next year called Cyberpunk 2077. Okay. And it is a it's an RPG basically. Okay. And there's a character creator and they no longer have uh male or female op- options. Mm-hmm. It's just like here are some body types. Uh Pokémon kind of started doing that. Is that right? They, they used to say are you a boy or a girl? And right. now it's like which one do you look like? There you go. So that's smart. Yeah. Cuz it's just like yeah, this is just they had to have swappable heads, though, right? For the hair, for the hair. Uh, but that was the thing: is you could you could do like short totally hair, bald. like whatever. And you could something that I thought was really cool and was not expecting was like you could get hearing aids for your doll. Yeah, stuff. they're like I right. think there's one with like like a wheelchair or something. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. It's so pretty cool. so if you have if you have hearing aids, you can get a doll that has hearing aids just, too. Just like and yours. It's like, oh, it's me. It's me as a it's doll. Me. Yes. I'm going to make myself as a doll. That's so cool. I'm going to live forever. This doll that's going to be my... I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to possess... I'm going to create a, a ritual to invest... What am I doing? <laughs> this is what this sounds like a place just for I'm me. I'm going to go to Tribune Tower. I'm going to touch all the stones and I'm going to put my soul in this doll. <laughs> and I'm going to become the Tribune Tower. Sometimes nothing is the best thing. Yeah. That's what John Lennon said. Mm. Right. <laughs> no, that's not John Lennon. This is more John Lennon. Right. Right. Too right, mate. And this is Paul. <laughs> and this is Ringo. <laughs> Oi, it's Ringo in there. <laughs> Thank you for playing Arcade Audio. Play more at arcadeaudio.net.